Now, the U.S. consulate in West Jerusalem, which had been providing consular services to Palestinians, has been absorbed by the new U.S. embassy to Israel. The controversial decision to turn them into a single diplomatic mission was announced in October by U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Well, the consulate has been in place for nearly 175 years and acts as a de facto U.S. embassy for Palestinians. Many Palestinians consider the move a downgrade in diplomatic relations. Well, let's bring in Mohammed Chakawi. He's a senior fellow at the Al Jazeera Center for Study. Uh, Mohammed, the U.S. consulate uh, has served for decades as the main channel uh, of communication between the U.S. administration and the Palestinian leadership. Does this mean that Palestinians uh, will now be forced to work with the U.S. embassy under Ambassador David Friedman, who, quite frankly, Palestinians pretty much despise? They see him as extremely close to Israel and a supporter uh, of illegal settlements. It seems to be an undiplomatic sense of Trump's diplomacy where he is basically looking at the entire Israeli-Palestinian conflict through the prism of Israel, of Netanyahu, and he is excluding the counter perspective. Therefore, this is not conflict resolution, this is not diplomacy. So now it becomes awkward for Palestinian officials, let alone ordinary Palestinians, to accept the fact that they have to go to the U.S. embassy in Jerusalem with the whole symbolic, historical, and also, and also psychological, you know, connotation that they it's like they are pushing them. I mean, the, the, the Trump administration is pushing Palestinians to accept status quo. This is not diplomacy. To me, this is more of twisting their arm and if he, if Trump is siding too close with Netanyahu, then I think he is losing not only the Palestinian, but also the Arab and the Islamic and other communities that are now looking at him as a, an ally to Israel alone. And, and the Palestinians have been scathing in their response, haven't they? I mean, the Secretary General of the PLO's Executive Committee, Sai Berakat, said, look, this is the final nail in the coffin um, of the U.S. administration as a sponsor of the peace process. So this has huge implications, doesn't it? It seems that the Trump administration does not really think seriously about a political process peace process or whatever we call it. It seems to be it's a matter of political realism where the White House decides how to proceed. Therefore, the Israelis are pleased with this, you know, uh, bringing the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, closing the door against other, you know, issues, the final status of Jerusalem, the right of return for refugees, and so forth. So if we exclude all these issues from the table, then the question becomes, what would be a good point of entry into negotiation? So he is closing the door against a bilateral or trilateral, if you like, try that in a process of, of, of negotiation. Therefore, I don't see that... Trump can claim he is a peacemaker in the Middle East. And, and, and that's an important point you make, uh, Mohammed, because, I mean, how does all of this then play into the broader context uh, of the U.S. tightening the screws on Palestinians, which is the point you're making? I mean, Trump's already cut funding for UNRWA. He's moved the embassy to Jerusalem. Now we have this consulate merging. Uh, so what's this all telling us, do you think? It seems that we are closing the door against any peaceful coexistence because... Trump is looking, as I said earlier, through the prism of Israeli interests, let alone whether he is considering the U.S. strategic interests in, the, Israel, in the, the, the Middle East and, and beyond. So this strong alliance between Netanyahu and Trump raises new questions. Where are we heading with the U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East? I don't see that there is much trust in Trump, let alone... Uh, the fact that also within the State Department, there are two schools of thought. One says, OK, we have to do what we are told to do by the okay. White House. But the other community within the State Department is considering some kind of pessimism that we are doing it the wrong way. Diplomacy is about opening venues, not closing them. So, so just a final thought from you. I mean, the Palestinians have steadfastly refused to have any conversations uh, with the U.S. administration. They don't regard the U.S., as you say, uh, as an honest broker for peace. Will this move, with the consulate being merged now with the embassy, will this just harden the tensions between both sides? I mean, the Palestinians are not going to talk to the Americans, are they? Absolutely. So there is mistrust going on now among the Palestinians and among other Arabs in the region. So the question is, if we do not uh, empower both sides, the Israelis and the Palestinians, to come to the table with some confidence that they can bridge certain primary gaps before we come to a peace negotiation process, then I think it becomes a matter of 
just you know another wasted uh, window of opportunity for the White House as well as for other stakeholders who would like to contribute in the peace process. Okay, Mohamed Chakawi, thank you very much for your insight. My pleasure.